Vocal Health Practices of Choral Conductors. Thank you to The Voice Foundation, Dr. Sadiloff, and my co-author, Gwen Coravan. No Disclosures. The aim of this study was to provide insights into the current practices related to vocal health and referrals among choral conductors. Choral conductors completed an online survey related to the rationale and likelihood for seeking medical advice or guidance. The survey consists of 31 multi-part questions. It covered the major areas of demographics, vocal health, and vocal pathology. The survey was posted online on the National Association of Teachers of Singing website and several professional choral group sites on Facebook such as American Choral Directors Association and the National Association for Music Education. There were 254 qualifying respondents, predominantly women. Almost 10% of the total were foreign, mostly Canadian and other Commonwealth countries. The average age was between 40 and 49 years old. Respondents averaged 20 years of experience as voice educators and slightly more experience as performers. Nearly 75% of the choral directors identified themselves as voice teachers, and roughly 70% are either professional or semi-professional singers. Over 50% are also music directors, and not quite 40% are also vocal coaches. 66% of the respondents had advanced degrees. 20% of the respondents had doctorate degrees. Over 20% were Masters of Music in Performance, and over 10% were Doctorate in Performance. Other Masters included Choral Conducting, Voice Pedagogy, and Worship Music. Other Doctorates included Choral Conducting, Music Education, and Voice Pedagogy. Most respondents used a mix of social learning and self-directed learning by attending conferences and talking to colleagues and reading and internet research. 20% had some formal instruction through a course. Others included their private voice teacher, graduate course in pedagogy degree programs, and working with physicians. Nearly 46% of the participants were able to recognize vocal fold health issues if they heard them but had nothing else to go by, and another 45% thought they could. 98% were aware that some functional vocal problems like distortion in the tone, breathiness, or lack of strength, etc. might also be vocal health problems. The overwhelming majority of the choral directors responded that they do not have an image or video of their larynx in a healthy state. Slightly over 25% have a photo or a video of their larynx in a healthy state. Over 50% of the choral conductors have experienced loss of voice, loss of range, and muscle tension at some point. One in seven reported they were currently experiencing loss of range, and one in six reported they were currently experiencing muscle tension. Of particular concern was the current hoarseness for more than two weeks reported by 6% of the respondents. 25% waited more than two weeks to seek medical assistance and another 25% of the respondents never sought medical assistance for their vocal health symptom. For those who waited, in 66% of the cases, the symptom went away. 26% of the coral conductors were able to treat their symptoms themselves. 30% of the respondents indicated insurance was an issue. The others included lack of professionals in the area or just blamed it on aging. Chronic laryngitis, possible neck mass or lump, throat soreness, sinus difficulties, and loss of voice were all symptoms that the majority of the respondents would seek medical intervention. Other symptoms included vocal fatigue, acid reflux, and thyroid cancer. 
Over 50% of the coral conductors indicated they use alternative medical professionals, predominantly massage therapists and chiropractors. Others included Feldenkrais practitioner, Alexander Technique, cranial sacral therapist, and yoga. 45% of the respondents used a combination of traditional and alternative medical professionals. 25% of the coral conductors had been diagnosed with a vocal pathology. Almost 66% of the coral conductors diagnosed were diagnosed with GERD. The other category included prenodule edema, spasmodic dysphonia, and bowed vocal fold. The most common cause of vocal injury was overuse. For over 25% from poor speaking or singing technique. The other causes listed included allergies, viruses, stress, singing too soon after surgery, overuse while vocally unhealthy, and sadly injuries sustained during surgery by intubation tube. Just over 50% indicated they are as good, if not better, following the treatment. 12% are still in recovery. For the other category, they indicated they need to be careful from now on using their voice. 66% of the choral conductors indicated none of their clientele or students possess a photo or video record of their vocal folds at normal baseline. 57% of the choral conductors worked with K through 12th grade and 40% worked with university students and 44% of the respondents taught private students. Here are the symptoms most likely to result in referrals by the choral conductor. Chronic laryngitis, neck mass or lump, and chronic soreness in the throat were among the top symptoms. Some of the other responses indicated a desire to wait a reasonable time. 66% of the respondents to this question indicated that they were likely or very likely to refer a client or a student to an ENT. Clientele or students closely tracked what the choral conductors indicated they used for themselves. Conductors are most likely to refer them to massage therapists, chiropractors, and acupuncturists. Others included Alexander and Feldenkrais practitioners. Interestingly, while over 40% of the choral conductors indicated they did not use alternative medical professionals, only 23% indicated they wouldn't refer their clientele or students to them. 55% of the respondents who referred their clientele or students to an otolaryngologist or ENT also indicated a willingness to refer them to at least one alternative medical professional. Over 25% of the respondents said insurance was an issue for their clientele and over 50% did not know. Choral conductors in this study do include vocal hygiene in their teaching curriculum, are aware functional vocal problems might also be vocal health problems, and could hear vocal health problems. They do refer their students to both traditional and alternative medical professionals. Insurance is an issue. Further questions, what was the treatment or recommendation of professional assistance, including alternative medical professionals? How do we educate choral conductors about referral practices? How do we educate those with conducting and music education degrees on hearing vocal health problems? How do we help those without insurance? In conclusion, this study provides preliminary data regarding vocal health and referral practices among choral conductors. Colleges and universities should consider including vocal health and rehabilitation courses in their music education, conducting, and music director degree programs. Further investigation is warranted. Thank you.